Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whichever the case might be. What do you live on today? Uh, I have this shirt on. It's it's a weekend snow. I can wear what I want. It's wild. I sort of like it, though. I like it a lot. My mom made it a long time ago with snow. But, uh, but it's kind of celebratory, don't you think? Uh, I guess. I like it. Uh, thanks, Ohm. That's nice. But today we've got some uh, multivariable calculus space curve stuff to look at. Let's, let's take a look at it. Wild. I like it. Okay, you guys, you, you take a seat here, and we'll take a look at some of this stuff. All right. So we've got a couple. We're going to be looking at the geometry of these space curves for a while. So let's take a space curve we're kind of familiar with. Alpha of t equal this 1 t and t squared. And let's see what happens with this. Alpha maps say, let's begin with a specific interval between 0 and 1 in the real number line. Maps into three dimensions. And it's a space curve. You can take a look at it. And it kind of uh, zooms up like this. Begins at uh, 1, uh, 0, 0, when t is 0, and ends at 1, 1, 1. So it, end, it begins at 1, 0, 0, and ends at 1, 1, 1. And it zooms up something like this. So here is a plot of alpha. So how should we think about this? The way you should think about this is there are two things going on. There is a track on which you have kind of, a, in this case, maybe it is a um, ladybug. So you have a ladybug flying on a path from here to here. And how that ladybug flies is given according to this equation. So the, the flight of the ladybug is tracked like this. So maybe if this was a firefly, this would be the track of the light of that firefly. And the firefly would actually fly according to this equation. Now that firefly has a velocity at any point. I like ladybug. Let's use ladybug. So that ladybug has a velocity at any time, which is given by 0, 1, 2 t. This uh, velocity has two components. The first component is the length, which because this is a derivative, the length of this vector will give the speed which would be 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2t squared, 2t the quantity squared. So this formula gives the speed of the ladybug at any given time during this flight. So she begins uh, off at uh, maybe 1 millimeter per second. And she ends up, when t is 1, she ends up at the square root of 5 millimeters per second. So she's increasing speed as well as increasing elevation and so on. Her direction is the direction of the uh, derivative. So it's in this direction. <clears throat> and that's generally true. If you wanted a tangent line, you could use, uh, for example, the tangent line when t is 1, you could use root uh, 0, 1, 2 for the direction. But the direction in general the specific word direction means unit vector. So in general terms, or in loose language, any vector that all of these vectors have the same direction. But the technical word of, of for direction right here is unit vector. And the unit vector in this direction at any time t is the vector divided by its length. So it's 0, 1, 2 t divided by its length. The length we already found is the speed. So this is 
uh, the vector to zero, one over the square root, and then two t over the square root. And this vector is given a name, t for tangent. And this vector t is a unit vector that points in the direction of the tangent line at any given point. So it's always of length one. Speed is a function of time. It's just, uh, if we're thinking about this as time, this is just this. And uh, then the speed at any given time is given by this formula. And the direction of travel is this unit vector. Now, if I just ask you for a tangent line, which I did in the last homework, you don't have to use this. You can use any vector in quote that direction. But having a unit vector is important. So technically, um, the direction will mean unit vector for us, but then we can loosely use it in other ways. So this is our picture. And the idea is we use this flight information to gain geometric information about the path. Um, and there are a couple things we could find. And I'd like to talk about the first one, and that's the length of this path. How long is this path? Now, on the homework that I gave you, I gave you the uh, for last uh, uh, for Friday's lecture. One of the things I asked you to find was uh, the path of of another function that actually has the same flight path but flies it in a different way. So it'll have a different speed at any time. It'll have a different unit vector at any time. And yet the path is the same. And so uh, either of those parameterizations of that curve will give the same length, the same path length. OK, so let's take a look. The distance traveled by uh, alpha is uh, given by, and here is the idea. This is, this is from your calc one, that if you have a distance function, and that distance function is a function of time, and you take the derivative of it, what you get is the um, uh, speed. In general, you get the velocity. If you take the derivative of this, you get the acceleration. And consequently, if you integrate the speed with respect to time, you're going uphill here. So say between zero and one, this will give the distance traveled. This is a one dimensional idea, but speed is a one dimensional function and that's what we're doing here. So all of this applies to what we're doing up here. So to get the distance traveled, we simply integrate the speed. So the answer between zero and one at distance traveled is the speed, which we just computed of t dt. And there's one little caveat I have to say here. This will be the, the path length. And what we'd like to say is this is the length of the graph. And this is where the caveat is. The path like length is almost the length of the graph, but you have to be a little careful, and I'll show you why. In this case, it is the length of the graph. So 
I'll kind of make up an example where it's not exactly the length of the graph. And maybe I'll just draw the picture here. So we have a graph, and let's say our graph is simple, and it's just this. And if we, uh, if we gauge where the ladybug has flown, she's flown according to this. Everything looks fine. But one difference is what happens if the ladybug flies this and then turns around and flies back? Then if you integrate the speed, so it begins here at zero, here at one half, say, and flies back at t equal one. If the ladybug actually flies the route this way, out and back, then what you get by integrating the speed is the entire distance traveled, so you get twice the graph length. So what this integral is giving you is the distance traveled according to this formula. And if the path is duplicated at any point, then it will give you more than the actual length of the graph. Now, if the ladybug turns around, at this point, the velocity will be the zero vector, zero, zero, zero. Velocity will be zero at this point. So if the velocity is not zero at some point, then, then the graph length and the path length will be the same. If there are zero velocity points, you got to be careful. So this is the distance traveled by alpha. It is the integral of the speed. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. And um, so we, we've talked about the vector t, which is alpha prime of t divided by the uh, length of alpha prime of t, unit vector. And notice there's a problem also with defining t in the case that alpha prime of t is zero. If the speed is zero, then, uh, then there's a problem with t. Can't compute it. So this only exists when the speed is not zero. And we've talked about the distance traveled. And in general, this is usually a little uh, lowercase s indicates distance. The other thing I wanted to talk about is curvature. These space curves have curvature, and you want to measure that. So you're going along pretty straight, and then you curve up. And at any given point, you want a measure of how much this is curving. How much is this curving? And this could be defined, and in fact is defined in several ways. But the standard way that curvature is measured is as follows. You take um, the derivative of the function t, but the, you take the derivative of T, but you don't take it with respect to time, you take it with respect to distance. So the derivative of the unit vector, so this is a derivative, but the variable is distance. So derivative of tangent direction with respect to distance traveled. So it factors out how quickly or how slowly you are uh, traveling that path and just looks at the derivative with respect to distance. But using the chain rule, this is the same as t prime with time as the variable divided by and uh, 
the derivative of distance with respect to time is speed. So this would be t prime of t. This will, by the way, is absolute value of all this. Curvature is an absolute value thing. So this will be the absolute value or the length of t prime of t divided by um, the speed. The speed is already a positive value. So this is the length of alpha prime. So t prime of t divided by the speed gives the curvature. The symbol for this is a kappa, Greek letter kappa for curvature. And we'll be computing curvatures and comparing curvatures. We'll be looking at other properties of these curves, but the first two are path length and curvature. That's it. See you Monday. And uh, and and hope you enjoyed the pictures into three-dimensional curve space. We'll be living here for a little while. And see you soon.